Hi, today we're going to have a look at how to change a standard cabinet to have continuous recessed finger pulls. First of all, I'm going to alter the top of the cabinets to change from a solid top to having a vertical pine rail set back the same distance as the recessed finger pull we're going to put in. I can update both cabinets one after the other. I now want to alter the top of the door gap to bring that down from 3mm to 30mm so I can use my parameter that uh, drives that position and change that from 3 to 30. There we go. Zoom in on that and you can see that that has dropped down. Next thing we're going to do is the, door, the draw gap, uh, same thing, use our parameters select that parameter, change it from 3 to 30 mil and there we go that is updated and we look at also the parameter that drives the center gaps between the drawers and change it from 2 to 30 mil and that's updated there we go. Now we want to set up a guidelines to organize where our rails are going to go. So first of all I want to turn off the doors and drawers in layer 4 and I'm going to turn on my volume and I'm going to make a coordinate system on the face of that volume. Then I can start my sketch. So I just select that, that's my coordinate system, turn it into a sketch. I'll just select the coordinate system and flip it around 90 degrees around the Z refresh that now we're ready to start our sketch so first thing we do is we'll just start a line and we just select the front edge of the cabinet and drag a line right along the front edge of that cabinet and this is going to be my guiding line for my recess pull. So I finished that sketch then I start a new sketch for the pulls that will be on the drawers. So I want to turn my volumes off and turn my drawers on. So I'm going to use the top edge of both of those um, second and third drawers as my guiding line for my recessed finger pull. So we're going to draw a line across the top of those drawers and then we'll constrain them to the top edge of those drawers. So I'll just draw my two lines, making sure they're uh, parallel to the drawers. Now we'll just trim them up and we'll constrain those endpoints to be in line with the carcass where our recess pull is going to finish. go. We'll just trim these other lines up. Beautiful. And that one. And now we'll just align them with the top edge of those drawers. That one's done. That one's done. Now we can finish that sketch. And now next stage is to bring in the elements which are going to form our recessed finger pulls. So these are called an extruded component and we'll just pull it down from the tree. Now they're under Aussie hardware and miscellaneous recessed finger channel. Now we have a drop down with different sizes that we've loaded in here so we're going to pick the 50 by 25 and then we go to auxiliary elements and this is the sketch that's going to form the routing line so we pick curves we select the curve that the handle is going to run on and there you can see it's come in and it's laying in the wrong orientation so now we can spin that we'll spin that through 90 degrees there it is it's right orientation we need to now pick the right point that's the key point 
that is now in the right position. So we can go, OK, we're happy with that. Now we want to go and use our soaring feature to select the panels we're going to saw using the guide curve that we brought in with that element. So use a, our saw function. We're going to pick the lasso, so we can pick multiple parts, and then we'll pick the ends, the four ends of the two cabinets. They all need to get sawn. We go OK, and the sawing path is the curved line that we brought in with that element. We go OK. So now, those all those four ends have been um, sawn to the shape of that curved element. So you can see it sitting there. All those ends are being shaped away, so that will fit in very nicely. Because the other two drawers were done in the same sketch, we can do them simultaneously. So we'll just go back and find the element to bring in again, the curved element. Miscellaneous, recessed finger pull, there we go, 50 by 25. In this case here, we're going to need a pocket top and bottom. So it's a different curve shape that will come in with these elements and we'll pick the curve that it's going to line up with and you'll see both elements are coming at the same time. We'll rotate them through 90 degrees and then we'll pick which key point is going to drive them off that curve and offset from the bottom. That is the point that we want. So that's now in the right position. We're happy with that. Now we'll use our saw feature to cut away using the guide curve that we've brought in with the element. So in this case here, we just need to pick two ends. The lasso, that end, that end, OK. And then the guide curve, and OK. Now we'll have to do the same to the bottom one. Soaring, we'll use the lasso again, pick the two ends and pick the guide curve and there it is that's sawn up so that sawing has gone right through now that will go through to our nesting which is our next step so i just wanted to show you how this looks in a rendered mode so how it would look on the factory floor in a customer's residence looks nice and sleek that's the style that we wanted. And you can see that how everything's set together there with the drawers and doors removed. Just how you would expect that to look on the bench before the decorative panels are put on. So what we want to do now is send this through to Enroute. So we'll pick Enroute. We'll pick Main Assembly. And then we pick the, the criteria, which is type, we're going to pick panels and expand all. And let's go OK. That brings into the Enroute. There's your seat size. Open up top solid wood. Add the file that we've just um, produced, which is under recess finger pull and the 16mm carcasses. We'll process that and that's all happening in real time and we go OK and there we have the nest. So you can see all the routing has happened to accommodate the recessed uh, finger pull channel and all the edging's all nominated, all the drilling for adjustable shelves, drawers etc is all done and that's come in just into the second sheet. So that's the nesting all done that quickly and the machining is all assigned. Now, I just want to go back to the um, drawing or the model because on this model, uh, because everything's associative, I still have the opportunity to change things. So I can change, for instance, the height of the top drawer there and everything else is associative so everything else will update as well. So that's 200 mil currently I'll make it 150. So the two bottom drawers will change in size and the handles will move 
in accordance with that new condition. Thank you for watching yet another example of top solid wood helping you work smarter, not harder.